Hello everyone, I'm Jim Lewis from Model Train Technology. Welcome and uh, thank you for watching. Today we're going to talk about detection and one of the most important parts of creating animation on a layout is figuring out where the train is on that layout. Uh, there have been uh, two primary ways that people do that over the years. One is current detection. So the rails are electrified and you can detect whether an engine is taking current from a particular part of the track. Now it requires you to separate or isolate and insulate each section of track that you want to provide detection for. That takes a lot of floor planning. Uh, it's a lot more work than just snapping track together. And it's very hard to go back after the fact if you've built a huge layout uh, to go back and try to uh, introduce that back into the layout. Uh, the second method is some kind of either magnet or infrared. Uh, infrared light is invisible and the way it works is a transmitter and a receiver. The transmitter bounces an infrared signal, a uh, light, off an object and the receiver uh, receives it and measures the amount of light that bounces back. If it's a little bit of light, nothing is in the way. If there's a lot of light, something's in the way. It's bouncing back more light. Uh, one of the key problems with infrared detection, while the light itself is invisible, the sensor is sensitive to ambient light. So the daytime light, uh, it's sensitive to uh, very, uh, mercury lights, in, uh, fluorescent, LEDs, too much light, too little light, and you're constantly having to sense, uh, change the uh, the, uh, or adjust the sensor to make it work. Uh, one of my customers has a night scene and a day scene, and during the day, uh, as he's using and, and working on the trains and doing the modeling, the day scene and light scene changes, and it wreaks havoc on his infrared sensor. We built an infrared sensor system, and uh, we had it for under the track, and we had a side of the track one. We, in fact, we used the same case that, that we're gonna talk about our sensor. Uh, but we had the same problem everybody else did. We had a couple of more features, but we really were not happy. Uh, if a brown coal car went in through in front of the sensor, uh, we got a sort of lukewarm result, a big silver Amtrak car. Uh, and so anyway, it was a long story, but uh, that just wasn't working for us. And it wasn't any different than other pro companies' products. So we set out to, uh, our design goal for this was two things. One is we wanted to very precisely measure exactly where the train is. Uh, our infrared sensor could do that uh, variable by about 25% error. And it was okay, it was kind of cool, but not good enough. This sensor uh, that we built, uh, it's called the Precision Center from Model Train Technology, has a one millimeter pre uh, precision. That means you can detect exactly where a car is uh, at one millimeter increments and its range is uh, just under six inches, so just five and three quarter inches approximately, and it's impervious to ambient light. You could, we're gonna shine a very bright LED right at this thing uh, when we get it set up and do the demonstration. It doesn't care. Uh, it works uh, right side up with fluorescent, for fluorescent lights, LED lighting. My desk lamp, which was uh, very bright, uh, caused the infrared sensor we had to stop working because that's just it couldn't detect uh, that bright light from anything else. Uh, this sensor works fine. Uh, that's the sensor. It comes with a three-foot wire. Uh, just to run around, uh, sh show you this. Uh, the sensor faces. It's going to go along the side of the track. As I mentioned, we have uh, designed an electrical box for end scale. The sensor just fits into this bracket. You pop it on. And if you need to make adjustments, you can take the top off. We have two types uh, for N scale and HO. Uh, they have the broader bracket here, so you can screw it down to the layout if you want. Uh, there's a slot in the bottom for the wires, and uh, just works like that. Or the, the footprint where there's no uh, mounting bracket. In this case, you just glue it down onto the layout. And again, sl slots in the bottom for the holes. There's the N scale, here's the HO one. They look identical. They are identical, they're just sized differently. Uh, we're going to, um, and so let's go back and just uh, uh, show you a few features on the detector. Uh, there are detectors out there, it, um, but we think ours gives you more a variety, more control. Uh, there are two control tabs on here of uh, potentiometers. Uh, you can adjust them. And in fact, uh, we supply you with the perfect screwdriver. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten a little product like this with either dip switches or these small potentiometers, 
and I needed a two millimeter screwdriver and I couldn't find the smallest one in the jeweler's kit. I keep losing that one because it's so valuable. Uh, so we're gonna give you a screwdriver that comes with it and this just allows you to adjust and turn the potentiometer. There are two, one is to adjust the range uh, for that 150 millimeter uh, or six inch range, how big you want it, you wanted a small range or big range. And then the second mode is the scale, uh, N scale, O scale, and HO. And in that case, there is a, a band uh, of detection and you can slide the band in and out. And so a train farther away or closer in will not set off the detector, but only within the rails of that scale. So that's why we allow you to set the scale. Uh, there's an invert mode. Uh, what that does is usually what you want this to go on when the train goes by. But sometimes there are certain applications where you want this to be on and then to go off when the train goes by. And so by just flipping a switch, you can reverse the signal coming out of this. Um, and then the last one has to do with the timeout. Uh, the way this works is in immediate mode, which we're gonna start out and demonstrate, as soon as the train gets within the, the beam, uh, it's gonna trigger it. And as soon as it exit, it turns off. Uh, there are cases where you might want it to go stay on for one or two seconds or up to a minute. And so that switch allows you to switch ranges from zero to 30 seconds or from 31 to 60 seconds. Uh, and so that's all available and the, the dial would allow you to fine tune that range uh, exactly the way you want it. So very simple, uh, just slides into the bracket and, and away we go. So uh, we're gonna go and show you and demonstrate this. And to do that, I'm gonna get on the other side of the camera so I can uh, manage the, the project. Uh, we're gonna show you three things today with our detector. We're gonna hook it up to our fiber lighting controller and that's what's driving these block signals. We now are making block signals. These are fiber optic block signals, a two signal one and a three signal one or a three light. Uh, then we have our own power center. So if you have a lot of detectors and you wanna hook them up, uh, this is the perfect supply. It all runs on five volts. This is a five volt converter. It uses our uh, power adapter. Uh, very simple there. And then the last thing we'll talk about is how to uh, run relays and turn relays on and off. So uh, this won't actually power a relay, but it will, on certain kind of relays, and we'll show you what type, you can turn things on and off. And this, the relay switch can switch almost anything. It can turn on the lights uh, in the room, it can run sound, it can run other automations, uh, animations that you might have. So it gives you a lot of power and control, and uh, we'll think, we think you'll like that. So uh, let's get started and um, show you the model train technology precision detector. For the first demonstration, we're going to use the model train technology fiber lighting controller. It's a eight port, 16 light LED fiber controller, and uh, you can set any one of the output ports. Uh, you can connect fiber optics into this, and it will blink, flash, or stay on. And we're going to, it has a five volt power supply out, which we're gonna to use to power the detector. And it has a set of eight detection ports here, and we're gonna use uh, one of those to uh, run it. So we're gonna just give this power, and I'll show you how easy this is. We'll just uh, plug it in. I have my two light block signal. Uh, this is just plugs into the back. And because I have it set up already, one of the lights is already on because that will be the green light, okay? So when the trigger goes off, the, the fiber controller will switch the red and the green light. It, there's a timeout, uh, which we can control either from the fiber optic, fiber lighting controller, or from the precision detector. Today we'll use the precision detector to do that, uh, but either one is fine. And there are reasons for using one or the other or a blend, uh, particularly when you introduce sound. Uh, next month our sound control module uh, will be available. Uh, here it is, and it's ready to go. Uh, and we'll, that's just a bit of a tease there, and uh, we'll get that going later. All right, so I have double stick tape the detector to the, to the ground here. Uh, it comes with the power wire, and I'm just gonna plug it into the five volt side of the fiber controller. 
and you can't see anything. So this is the <laughs> this is the the uh, electrical box that it comes with, and we're going to put that on the side. And what I did is I printed a clear version of it so you can see what's going on. And you should be able to see uh, in a minute, I'm gonna move, so instead of adjusting this, I'm gonna just show you that, uh, let's see if you can see that light. So the light is on. And uh, let me, pl ah, so just keep an eye on the block detection. I'm gonna plug this in here. So when this is red, this is on. And we'll work it that way, okay? So right now, this is set for no gauge. And what that means is that from five millimeters away from the detector, all the way to 150 millimeters, it will detect. Now I've just gone outside, so this is the range that you can control. And it's just gonna, uh, and I'm moving the track because it's a lot easier and, and manipulating it, but you get, you get the idea. So I'm gonna keep that car in there and I'm gonna move the train, the track in so that the light, it's detecting it, all right? So now, when I move the train out of the beam of light, it goes on and off, okay? That's pretty straightforward. And, oh, there we go. And in fact, now any train, uh, I'm gonna move this over and put another rail here in parallel, okay? Move this back until it goes off, then move it back. Okay, so here's the range to detect. If this one's not setting it off, this one will, okay? So either train and anything in the middle. All right, that's pretty straightforward. Everybody can do that. But this is what's really cool. So I'm gonna change this to N scale mode, all right? And I'm just gonna adjust the switch on the inside here. I'm gonna pop it in the up mode. And after two seconds, uh, anytime you make a change to that, after two seconds, it recalibrates. And I'm gonna take this out all right, so now you, we have pretty much the same as we had before. This car on the right track is setting off the detector and back on again. But notice if I run this train in front of the detector, nothing happens because there's, uh, the detection zone is 10 millimeters wide. And so anything on this side of the rail and anything on this side of the rail will not detect it. So let's try it uh, differently. Let's adjust it so that it only detects this train. But then we're gonna put this train right up next to it, okay? Just really close. And we don't, so right now it's, it's not detecting and because of the range, it's not detecting this one, all right? So what we're gonna do is we want it to detect, uh, sorry, this train, but not the far train. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust this down and the way to do it is you just start with the max and rotate it counterclockwise, oops, until the light goes on. All right, just went on. Yep. All right, now I'm gonna pull it away and the light will go off. All right, so that's pretty good. But what about this? Oh, that train is a little bit off the track. So see how close those trains are? And this one is not affecting it but this is, so this is the N scale 10 millimeter range. And in fact, here further, if I put another train right up against it, of course, even a bigger one, doesn't matter uh, how big it is because it's not within the range and it, it won't detect it. And I have yet another piece of track just with a gondola on it. And I'm gonna put that closer in and I'm gonna run that in front of the train and you'll notice nothing happens, okay? Only when this train that's been set up goes in front and is in the range, it detects. That is way cool. So that is uh, 10 millimeters for uh, N scale, 20 millimeters for HO, so it's just the width of the rails and uh, 30 for O scale. So uh, O scale, you can only get two trains in there but it could detect them in the same manner that we just saw. Now, this is uh, interesting also. This is so fast and so precise that occasionally uh, on freight trains, if there's a train 
is there's a gap between the trains, the sensor will pick it up. So what we do to address that is we'll give this just a delay of about one second. Now for demonstrating the delay, I'm gonna add quite a bit of time just so you can see how that works. I'm gonna add about six or eight seconds. All right, so I'm gonna go in front. Now I'm out of the zone, all right? and it's gonna time out on its own. So it was about five seconds. And you can change that, like I said, anywhere from zero to 60 seconds, all right? So, the next thing to show you is uh, the adjustability and the different types of detectors. Now, uh, because of its precision uh, and the location of the detector, we put it kind of in the middle of the end scale uh, certain kinds of gondola will not trip it off. So you see that the detector did not pick up the gondola. I've set it back at the full range and zero timeout. If I put my hand in front, of course, you can see that the light goes on. Now, there are, in end scale, this is the only case with end scale because uh, the height of the track and the location and so forth, uh, you, you may want to be able to adjust it. So we have a second kind of detector uh, bracket system where it's mounted horizontally. And now, uh, if I switch the detector units around, okay, I'm just gonna plug in the, this other one. And, oh, gotta give it power. Plug it into our power supply. Okay, so now we've got detection. Uh, all right, but now it's still detecting, okay? It's, it's uh, so it's too close to the track. So what you can do, oh, I did this again, <laughs> bear with me. Now, by raising it up, we can get the gondola and in fact, all the trains will be picked up by this one because of the, the wheelbase. So if you have a situation where you have a lot of freight train and you have a different kind of track or you have the Kato, Kato track that you want to adjust. Uh, right, so let's move this in. Right, so there you go. So just detecting this one right there. So we have a horizontal mount and a vertical mount depending on your need. Next, we're going to show you how to hook up the precision detector to our power center. And for demonstration purposes, we're using our new product, which is the signal controller. Uh, it ha takes in this, uses the same five volt power supply. This is a fiber controller. So for the fiber, three light fiber block signal, uh, you just put the fibers in to the, through the uh, layout and plug them in. There's no soldering of any kind anywhere in this. So that's pretty cool. Comes with a magnetic bracket so you can mount it underneath the layout just like our other products. I've connected the signal wire to the controller and now I'm just going to power these up. I'm going to plug this plug this in here and plug this in here. It doesn't matter where there's there are uh, 10 outlets on the back and get my power supply. Plug that in and turn it on. And there we go. So we've got red light here. Uh, we've got the detector. So we switched from the two light to the three light. And let's just move this around. And now you can see that it went to green. We're gonna get out of the zone. It's going to change to yellow. So it's being timed by the signal controller. So I have the time down to just a couple of seconds. The block signal controller has four behaviors. Two aspect, which would be red and green. Three aspect, which we just saw, changes from red to green, back to yellow, back to red, uh, if there's no train train coming. Actually, these are green and, green and red are backwards. Gee, that's so simple. Let's just plug in the fibers to the other side. Now we have a green light and changes to red, yellow, and then back to green. I'd like a four aspect signal. There's a button on here, I'm gonna press it four times, 
one, two, three, four. And now this block signal controller is a four aspect controller. If we did two, it would be two aspect and so forth. So we'll just trigger this now. It's gonna go from red, go to yellow, flashing yellow, and then green. And if I wanna speed it up or slow it down, guess what? We use that same screwdriver. There's a little dial in there. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit, means shorten the time, and trigger my detection system. And it's gonna go very fast. In fact, it went so fast it didn't even do the blinking uh, section. Let's do a little bit more. That's how easy it is. Uh, there's no soldering. Uh, all, everything's included. Just put the detector in there, some adjustments. Uh, it's very precise. And in fact, like I said, if I put my hand in front here, nothing triggers if I put my hand uh, outside that. Oh, no, you know what? I don't have it in the end scale. I set it back to the general range. So let's go back to end scale again, just to, to play with that. So I'm gonna flip it up. Doing this with my left hand and with no glasses, so it's a little hard to see. There we go. Okay, so now we're back in the in scale zone, and I'm going to just move it outside the zone and wait for the light to go back to green. All right, now I just move it in until it detects. And there we go, and that's my new zone. And what, you wouldn't move the track, of course. You could move the detector back and forth, but you would adjust it this way to get that, that uh, range in there. Oh, did, I not, did I miss it? There we go. So notice that, it, let's get it to a, another color. Oh, I'm still in the zone. There we go. Now, nothing here coming through is going to change it. It's only the train. Now, if it's so, and in fact, if a train comes by a second time and triggers, it'll go back to red. All right, there you go. So, precision detector, power supply, block signal controller, and this will handle any uh gauge uh so n scale this is these are ho it'll handle we have n scale block signals uh which are here's in the raw form very simple similar uh you can put two n scale fibers into the pin so you can have an east and west orientation uh we have an uh this is ho we have o scale and the block signal controller we have the fiber optic one we also have an led one so if you have led lights uh, that you want to control with this. It looks the same, uh, except for the pins. There's some terminal connectors here. You just put the wires in there, and that mounts up underneath, and you can have a couple of uh, block signals with LED type connected to the same controller. And uh, that's it. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you what I meant by the bright light. This is a very bright LED light. I'm going to shine it right at the sensor exposed, no cover on it, and you can see that the detection is working just fine. Back it up a little bit, move it in. So now you have a precision detector that you don't have to, you don't have to adjust the brightness and the light levels for it. It works just great. All right, the last thing I want to show you today is uh, hooking up a standard relay system to the precision detector. So this is a single, and this is just a mechanical relay uh, with some insulated, uh, isolating circuits. And we have the signal wire connected. This wire comes with it, and this will plug right into the power supply, just like everything else. Uh, it's a fairly bright green light there that tells you power is on. And we're going to run the track detection, and you can hear it. Uh, you 
can see the red light going on and off. So that's basically the relay going on and off. This will handle uh, 110 volts, uh, up to 36, oh, so, I'm sorry, not this one. So there's, there's two types of this. This will handle up to 36 volts. Uh, there's a normally open and normally closed and common, and this is a single relay. Uh, you can also buy them in quads and, and in eights. So depending on what you're working on, you can have the precision detector connected to all of these different relays to run more powerful or different motors or different lighting systems. Uh, the train comes into the station, maybe you want the station lights to go on, and, uh, and you can connect multiple relays. Uh, so you can have two or three relays. Let's use the forward block here. You can connect the signal wire of two or three or more relays, just daisy chain the signal wire, and you can have this one uh, block, uh, sorry, detector trigger three or four relays at the same time. There's no problem with that. And uh, at the end of the day, you turn it off, turn it back on, and it boots up, and there you go. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, one more thing that I want to uh, show you that uh, came in from a customer that was working on this. So I'm going to take this off. And you saw the precision of the trains, uh, the detector. He said, can I use your detector to do end of track in a hidden zone? So imagine that you had a whole series of um, uh, tracks in a hidden yard, and you wanted to detect when the train got to the end of the track. Let's see if I can put this on here. Almost. Maybe I should do the demonstration with HO. What do you think? <laughs> the, the precision here is great. All right. So well, let me just move it this way because I don't have the light to do it. Okay. So the train got to the end of the track. Now it's not at the end of the track. Now it's at the end of the track. Now we could extend the length to exactly four inches or whatever distance that we wanted it to measure in this, in this space. And the key thing is, I guess I should, this is the key point, that the train on the adjacent track doesn't set it off, okay? So you could have a whole series of detectors, uh, one, per, one per track, uh, and they would be independently triggered. Okay, well, I hope that was uh, entertaining. And uh, if you have any questions, contact me, jim at modeltraintechnology.com or jim at modeltrainman.com, all one word. Our website is modeltraintechnology.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.